All right. Hopefully we are back. We're back. We think. <laughs> we'll see. We think. It was difficult getting set up this morning because I forgot those videos that we shot of repairing some of our parts that we had. Did you find them? I did. Okay. And I got them put on. So hopefully we'll have those ready to roll. Yeah. Sound sounding good for everybody. We'll see what they see what they say. We're running on um, YouTube today live, and Denny, you've been so popular that we've got you on Facebook live as well today. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I you can feel it. I feel the love. <laughs> yeah, you've been feeling people been calling you, but I've been seeing you on those videos, Denny. <laughs> yeah. So we'll give it just a second for people to roll in here. I'm going to check the audio and make sure I hit the right button. Okay. Today we're going to uh, we're going to try and show you how we're going to reline the skirts. I don't know if we can show you the whole process or not, but to, we'll kind of give you the idea of what goes on. Uh, I'm going to I've already cleaned one of the skirts and uh, Tony's going to clean the other one while I reline this one and then maybe we're going to trade places. Yeah, we'll see. we'll see what happens. So we got our first skirt that was kind of clean yeah and uh, these are these are after they've been in the press and they're straightened back out you can see how flat and nice they look now and before they were all curled up yeah gnarly. and our side jockeys yeah and and the, the fenders they're all flattened out back jockeys are flattened out and these front jockeys are flattened out. So. so we got all of that flattened out, and you can kind of see our flat pieces. And if you don't remember what they look like before, video number one of this series is a couple back. Look for saddle deconstruction, and you can see the uh, repairs that we needed to do on this. But we got the videos over on the computer, so we're going to step over there. We'll have Abigail start video one. And hopefully you guys can see them. There won't be any audio with it. Denny, are you, Denny and I are going to step over to the um, computer, and we'll be on a microphone there so we can kind of narrate what's going on. All right. So video one. All right, so you can see how kind of curled up the uh, side jockeys, right? Side jockeys? Right, the, the seat jockeys. Seat yeah. jockey. And all we're doing here is, is uh, spritzing them with water. That's just strictly water, uh, just to get them wet because uh, saddle skirting is, is a natural veg tan leather. It's a raw leather and it will take moisture. When you get it wet, then you can shape it. And when it dries out, that's the way it'll stay, hopefully. So this is over in your area of Springfield Leather. We can see your kind of small area you have there. Let's move on to video number two. Still kind of spraying. We let that soak in. We kind of curled them down a little bit, and we're going to spray it again on the top and the bottom just so we can try to get it as much soaked in as we can. Is that right? Yeah. And it, <clears throat> leather that's this old and this dried out, it Oh, sorry about that. How about sound now? Let's see. So this is the this is the Denny press. Hopefully you have sound now. Sorry about that. 
I muted the wrong microphone. Now we've got all the parts wet and all of them are on the plywood. We're putting the top piece of plywood on. You know, I'll step on it just to kind of get things started. And then we ended up putting the bucket of water right on top of it just to use some pressure from yeah, there. Yeah, you definitely want want to put some weight on it and yeah. leave it overnight. Well, let's step back over there and we can explain a little bit more about that. Sorry about the sound on there. I had muted the wrong microphone instead of muting the video. Yeah, someone called in a question. So, called in? Yeah, or texted it in Texted something. in a question. Is the mold smell removed when you soak it? And the answer is not really. Uh, when we... After after it dries out, and what Tony's getting ready to do is clean it with uh, liquid glycerin saddle soap, and uh, in the end we'll uh, oil it with Neat's foot oil, and uh, for the most part the mold smell will be gone. If it's too bad, you can you can go over it with uh, oxalic acid, and that will actually kill the mold and. and hopefully get rid of this any smell there is. Yeah, so we kind of cut between the videos. So let's talk about them again since the sound um, cut out. First, we were spraying it down with water, and we were just soaking both both sides of it, just spraying with water. This one never got submerged all the way. We would just make sure we got it wet. in the leather, and it's still hard here. It hardened back up yeah. quite a bit, but it was super hard, uh, super hard before. Uh, Abigail, can you hit three on there for me? Of course. So you can kind of see this part of it where it's connected to the front jockey was super hard, but we just had to spray it, and it's it's loosened up quite a bit. Yeah, and the point, the the deal is it's going to remain hard until we uh, put something on it to soften it up some. And <clears throat> ideally, when it's still a bit damp, if you put some Neat's foot oil on mm -hmm. it, that Neat's foot oil will, will penetrate and, and actually keep some of that moisture in. Okay. And the what the water does is lubricate the fibers of the leather. Yep. Leather is just a series of fibers. Yeah. And when they aren't uh, lubricated, it's hard for them to move back and forth. Yeah. And so if they get rolled up and they get held in a position for a yeah, while, it's gonna that, stick right there. That's the way they want to stay. Yeah. So moisture in the air, say you have your saddle in the barn or you have your leather pieces in a barn and there's just moisture content in the air and it got molded a certain way, is it gonna stick that way when it gets done? Yes sir. Yeah. Yes sir. All right. And a lot of people lay their saddle down on the ground, you know, with, with the fenders coming out and this like this. Yeah. And that's probably what happened. Or just saddle. setting it straight down on the ground and not yeah. not setting it on a, a yeah. stand. We got a two by four at the barn that we slide our saddle up on a couple of spread apart there and yeah. everything lays down nicely. <laughs> we got another question here. Uh, couldn't really see it in the video. When we stuck them in the pail there, I know it wasn't very long, but how long did we let those? Or what would be a good time that, for the skirts and everything to sit? It, just, it depends. This this saddle is extra, extra dry. Yeah. So we left it in there for a while, probably 10 to 15 minutes, yeah. just to make sure that everything was wet. Uh, there again, you know, the wetter you get it, the longer it's going to take for it to dry out. So you've got to take that into consideration. But if you don't get it wet enough, you aren't going to be able to shape it. So it, it, that's a matter of your own discretion. Yeah, and on those pieces like that, we're getting the whole piece wet. So it's all going to be wet. So it's not going to be like one little spot gets a water damage. It's all yeah. getting the same amount of water for the same amount of time. We just put it down on the ground and put those two by fours and. We left it for uh, 24 hours. I think you had a yes, tooling class the yes. next day. The next day I came in and I took the press off of them and laid them out flat, just about like, like they are here on this table, and uh, let them dry over the weekend. And All right. Well, you can't see it. It's off screen just a little bit, but we got some. Is that not the natural sheepskin, but maybe a, um, yeah, what this do they is, call that? This is a coat acrylic. acrylic. We always used to just call it acrylic lining, but, yeah. you know, I think the... Uh, the brand name on it is Codell, but uh, it's an artificial sheepskin. Not real thick? No, but the nap is about like a, a regular uh, uh, saddle shearling would be. It's about three quarters to an inch long. So. It's going to be thicker than the saddle shearling that we had on the one we started with here, <laughs> being that it had none. It was minus zero. <laughs> <laughs> we had no skirting. So yeah. let's, uh, let's move over here to the table, and I'm going to move this camera right quick. So just hang on just a second, and we'll... See how to do what we're doing over here on the side. All right, hopefully you can see there on camera three. So we're just going to lay it out here on the table here so you can see it. 
Let us know if the sound gets bad or anything like that. Hopefully I make less mistakes now. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay this, uh, the fleece side down on the table. My post-it note ran under there. And uh, I'm going to take this saddle <clears throat> skirt that has been cleaned. And it, <clears throat> on this stuff, it really makes no difference which is the front and which is the back. On, a, on an actual sheepskin shearling, you want to make sure uh, the front of the saddle goes towards the, uh, let's see. Yeah, towards the the head of the sheepskin, simply because the grain of the hair will will be so it holds the pad in and won't let it slip out from behind the saddle, which a lot of people have problems with and don't understand why, and that's the reason. So we got we're facing it. If you have the sheepskin, you want the front of the saddle to face towards the head. The front of the head, head of the sheep saddle skin. towards the head of the sheepskin. Yes. But you got that one cleaned already, and I'm supposed to clean this one. How'd yeah. you clean that? Uh. I just used li liquid glycerin saddle soap and, and uh, soaked it up pretty good. I just so, ordered it directly on there. Make sure I start off with this right, and then I'll let you get back to that while I clean this one up. Yeah. So I'm just squirting it on there, right? Yes. Any any heavier than that? Yep, just keep going. Okay. Get it wet. All right, let me scoot over here and then let you go so they can see kind of what's going on. All right, you got enough room down there? Yeah. All right. And I will give you this and this. Oh, here, then I'll give you that one back. Oh, okay. Well, you might need oh, okay. that. that bucket of water there. Yeah. We have a bucket of water just sitting here beside it, and that's, okay. that's probably enough. After your, your uh, rag gets dirty, just rinse it off in there. All right, so just using regular here, I don't need to wet it to begin with. No. Do I want to, let me scrub it. Well, this. yeah, I kind of scrubbed it to get all the dirt kind of uh -huh. loosened up out of those. Uh, Tooling yeah. spots in. Okay, now we're going to go back, and I'm just going to... I'm going to use a magic marker on this and just mark around the skirts. And I'm not going to cut this real close. I'm going to give myself plenty of room. I've probably got a half inch all the way around when I mark this. You guys just let me know if my scrubbing here is annoying and I'll quit so you can hear Denny actually do something. <clears throat> now I've got while. that one. If I and I, While I'm at it, I'm going to turn it over and, and mark a, this, this same piece for the other side. But you have to make sure that you remember that you've got a right and a left. So don't make the mistake and do two lefts. So you don't need this one to draw your pattern for that. You're just going to flip no, it over. No, because I'm giving myself plenty of room. If I was going to try and cut it exact, which I never would, but if I was, I'd use each one separately. Or individually, I guess. Now... Since I forgot a regular straight knife to bring over here, oh. I'm going to resort to my pocket knife saddle making days and just cut this out with, with my pocket knife here. All right. Ingenuity. When one knife don't work, use another. Yeah. Well, this one's good. A good sharp knife is all you need. Anybody get any... Saddle repair jobs from the last time we talked to them. Thinking about taking some on. Maybe not quite so scared as they were. <laughs> there, you know, there's, there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, I learned a lot just taking stuff apart. That's the main thing. When I first uh, started, I worked for a saddle maker. And he said, you're going to be doing all this nasty work here. Because after you've done it all, after you've repaired every part of this old saddle, you can build a brand new one. You just go the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully after you built your new saddle, you didn't tear it apart. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. when you, uh, If you are repairing a saddle, Tony, you said you've learned a lot. When you were building a new one, I bet you would do things a lot different than they did on this one. Simply because you might have to repair this saddle again at some point in your life. Well, I know we talked about the fenders as when we get in there a little bit, a little bit later about things that you do differently with your fenders. So we'll explain some of that. Yeah. And this was a this was a production saddle, right? Exactly, exactly. And they they do things different than a, than a shop made saddle would be. But to, they're looking for speed. But yeah, but they're they're still basic things 
they're all the same. Okay, I've got this skirt cut out. You can see it here. You know, it's it's a little bit bigger than what the actual skirt is. But I'm going to turn the skirt itself over. I'm going to take this contact cement, and it doesn't matter what brand you use. I think we're using Van Grip here. Yeah, we're using Van Grip, but Bard Bard cement, work just or, fine. or Masters contact cement, any any kind that you have will work. Just have a ventilated area. Yeah. If you're which, if you're which we one. don't, this will make the rest everybody's of the, getting ready to have fun in this room. Is that what you're saying? It'll make the rest of the day go pretty smooth. Awesome. But uh, or we this, have you don't have to spread this real thick. Just make sure you get it everywhere, especially around the edges. Most people uh, don't worry too much about the edges, and then later on, the 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 skirts and the uh, the lining will, will kind of separate right there on that edge, and I guess it's not a real bad thing, but it sure doesn't look good. How's that looking? Looking great. Looking you keep great. cleaning, or? Yeah. I'll keep on cleaning, he says. No, you got that good. Well, I'm go, not. I wouldn't go any further. Don't clean it anymore. You might make might... me look bad if you go further. <laughs> My wife might put me to work at the house. There you go. But you aren't done yet. Oh, <laughs> I got more parts, he says. Yeah, and that's another thing. Uh, generally, before we actually do the repair work, we, we clean the saddle just like Tony's doing right now. But uh, before we put it all back together, then we'll uh, give it a good coat of neeks for the oil. So this is uh, the back part of the skirt? Yeah, that's the back jockey. Back jockey on now. I noticed when we took our skirts apart, they weren't laced together on the back. A lot of a lot of saddles I see now are the the two, even the two that my daughter has, are laced up on the back. Most most of them are. They lace them together, but that can be a bad thing. Uh, if you lace them too far back, if you lace them all the way. If you lace all the way towards this end, mm -hmm. it'll hold them together and, and actually cup down against the horse's uh, uh, and shape rear it just end. a little bit different. Yeah, and it will uh, back soar them. So you've got to be careful with that. So there's nothing wrong with, with these not being laced together. It's just harder to uh, locate them when you put them on the saddle itself. I hope my back is sore. Yeah. Oh, and the horse hates it worse. Yeah, plus he'll throw you on your back, and then now right. you're both your backs are sore. Right. But uh, anyway, I've got the, the skirt itself cemented. Now I'm putting the cement on the, the acrylic lining. Everybody slow down with the question, Stacy. Oh, one more, it says. All right. Oh, okay. How's Dan doing today up in Oregon? He check in with us yet? He's here. Nice. Welcome, Dan. Dan, how's it going? Why don't you come down and see us? Yeah, just fly on down. Stay over at Denny's house, I bet. You can. You can. You made you a trailer at your house. I know you did. Yeah, I made a little teardrop trailer. Yeah. yeah. I might go up and see you, Dan. There you go. You were up there not too long ago. Took a tour of the country. Yeah. Out toward that way. A couple of years ago, we went to, through Yellowstone and then on up to Glacier. And most points in between, it seems like. Yeah, that's the thing with driving. You kind of hit the, hit the points in between. Yeah. <laughs> or at least drive to them. It, it, I had great fun. I'm, I'm from the Colorado and Wyoming, so. We like to go ski out in Colorado. Oh, uh, yeah. Where do you go? We go to Breckenridge, Breckenridge. or Vail. Yeah. So we have our paint spots that are on here. I know that I've scrubbed and some of them have come off, but it looks like this paint's been on here for a minute. Yeah. You can get as aggressive as you want to when you're cleaning stuff like this, but sometimes if oh, you yeah, overdo it. Oh, yeah, I got a little with it and it started coming off. Sometimes if you overdo it, you can uh, actually rough up the grain of the leather and do more harm than good. So... With this one, you know, it's an old saddle. All we're trying to do is make it usable again. So, Got a couple questions here that Stacy had, and one of them I was going to make you do anyway. The first question is, on your neat foot, your neat foot oil, do you warm it up any? You can. Uh, Does that help I've soak in people, better? I've heard people say that they always do because it'll make it penetrate better and faster, and it, it probably does. But for me... 
especially leather that's this dry, it's going to soak that, that neat little oil up in a big hurry anyway. If, if you're, like if your shop is outside, out to, and doesn't have a lot of heat in it, a lot of times the neat little oil will uh, congeal and uh, turn kind of a milky white. If you heat it up, that'll, that'll clear it back up. But to, the heat, generally, I don't pay a lot of attention to, like I say, unless it's cold. So I was going to ask you this question anyway. We were talking about lacing the back part of the skirt together. On this one that it didn't have it done, could we go ahead and lace it back together? Could. We could. I don't see a reason to, but we could. So Phoebe's makes an acetone. Uh, would it be something that I could dab on these paint spots, or would I... The well, natural colors that it's picked up, would it take some of those natural colors and other it oils? It probably or? would. You don't, you, when you put... To, a foreign product on on that uh, leather, you never know exactly what you're going to end up with. Yeah, let me see if I can get these paint spots on there. I don't know if they're showing up on there or not. I don't know if you can see them. There's some just right over here, and I'm going to scrub on it a little bit harder and see what happens, see if we can't get it to come out. Just with the water and the liquid glycerin that I have here. So I'm just going to spray some down in the corner. Let's see if it comes up. Okay, now I've got to, the cement on both halves of this skirt. I'm not going to do this other skirt today. I'm going to let it dry out because we've got it pretty wet here. But I, what I'm going to do is start on the fenders, and I will do one fender here. Actually, maybe I ought to get Tony to clean one of these fenders a little bit. Yeah, well, I can clean one. I haven't got enough elbow grease going. So I don't know if you can see it. Does it show up there, Abigail? I think so. It looks pretty clear. It, it took, not all of them are gone. And it's I, not anymore. Move it. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> if, if I got, if I got crazy with it, I could probably get most of that paint off of there just by letting it soak up that water. And it seems that that water is re repelling the back of that spray paint or whatever kind of transferred over there and would let it, let it come up off that leather a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I got, evidently I have something else to clean. Yeah, clean that and then I'll start clean on that the finger. finger. All right. Okay. Well, we had a question the other day, and I think we talked a little bit about the skirts. A guy had a saddle, and he only had one fender. He was missing the whole other fender. So the, the only thing you've got to do to replace the fender, if, especially if you've got one, is lay, lay the one upside down on your piece of leather and draw around it, mm -hmm. and then cut that out, and you've got a, another fender the same shape. Kind of the same way if we do chaps. Yes, exactly. You, you've you always got a right and a left on a saddle. So yep. just, just keep that in mind. Like if I was wanting to, this is a right-hand fender, an offside fender is yep. what they would call this. So if I was wanting to make a near-side fender, if I put it down like this and drew around it, I would have two offside fenders. So I would put it like this, upside down, and draw around it, and that would be a mirror image of it. And we talked about the seat itself. Will you switch back to camera one real quick? We, talk, we were talking about the seat and the different parts of the saddle, and when we were feeling the leather, of course, this is all cut out of one piece, so the weight of it was different on this side than the weight was on, on the other side. And when you're building a saddle, you made a good point that people m might want to hear. You try to make the left or the right heavier. The left. And, and the <laughs> So our when, you're, is facing when, you're, this way. when you're looking at a saddle, when you're standing behind the saddle or, or sitting on top of it, the left-hand side of the saddle would be called the near side. That's the side you always get on and off right. of. Almost. Always. <laughs> the right-hand side is called the off side. You might not get off so, either side of the saddle. <laughs> so by rights, the near side is always going to get more use than the off side. That's where you always uh, sense your saddle up from, is on the near side. Mm -hmm. That's where you always get on and off of. Mm -hmm. So the near side is the one that should be the heavier piece on your leather. The near side with the side would be the side you would like to get off of. <laughs> Sometimes you end up getting off the front or the back. <laughs> yeah. How old is this saddle? If you were going to guess... Uh, if I was going to guess, I would say this saddle was probably made in the 60s or maybe the 70s. It's not that old. It's not an antique, mm -hmm. but it has 
it wasn't built very well to begin with, and it didn't have the very best leather in it. Yeah. And it's been not abused, but it hasn't been taken care of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know I brought in a um, circle Y. Switch back over here to this other one. They clean this fender right quick. And it was probably about the same 50s, 50s, 60s yeah. age of saddle. So on our fender, so we've made our seat heavier on the near side. Is our near side fender going to be heavier as that's, well? That's what you strive for. Right. Everything on the near side of the saddle should be the heavy part. And every piece of leather is going to have a heavy side and a light side. Mm -hmm. So, so just, if I say I have, say mine varies from the, from the top of the fender to the bottom, do I want the top to be heavier or the bottom to be heavier? Uh, the bottom. The fender itself is generally not going to take much strain. The stirrup leather is what's going to take the strain. Yeah, and we'll see more of that when we put it back yeah. together. Our stirrup leather is kind of taking, yeah. taking the brunt actually, of the... Actually, a, a fender, not necessarily structurally sound, but to, you, should, you should use a pretty firm piece for your fender because it's going to get wadded up a lot. It's going to take a lot of abuse. So if you use a firmer piece on that fender, it's going to stand up better. All right. And the, the left side should always be the best. Just just remember that when, when you're doing anything on a saddle, just make the left side of it be the heavy side. All right. We've got the All right. That mostly clean. You mean clean the back up? Yeah, that's pretty good for right now. All right. Well, so I'll clean the yeah, rest of it off. Let's kind of wipe this off. Dry it off, he says. I don't want to mess with wet leather. Well, we just want to transfer all the dirt. So we had our stirrups, our stirrup leathers, and uh, they were pretty well shot. Yeah, they were shot. So we're going to put on a, a new pair of stirrup leathers, and the other ones had just uh, some open two-prong buckles on them. And we're going to use uh, Blevins buckles on this one. And I know we were talking about this fender that we had, and you said this was something that you wouldn't do, put a slot in there. Well, you've you've weakened the fender right there. Most fenders, uh, the leather itself comes on down this way and and curls around. But this fender, since it's like this, we're going to have to add a piece on like this, so it'll come around like this. Because your uh, your actual stirrup leather is going to come through something like this. I can get to and this yes. piece is going to be on, so you'll actually have two pieces down oh, there at the okay. bottom. Okay. Yeah. So. Are you guys used to the smell yet? <laughs> the glue smell? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty strong. So, uh, as you can see, you're going to have actually two pieces of leather here that are holding your stirrup and your weight, and it's none of it's going to be the fender. The fender is just to shape it to keep your pants clean. The and that two part that we have, that's going to be the part that's over the top of the tree. This is going to be the part that's over the top okay. of the tree. So the other one will be down on where our actual stirrup yeah. is at. Let me show you here. What we're going to do, I've already cut these pieces out and uh, I've skived one end down a little uh -huh. bit just so it's not real thick there. But uh, I'm going to put two rivet holes in right here. Is there a certain way that our grain should be running? That's no. a question we had to come come in at any part of the saddle. Uh, only the sheepskin. Only the sheepskin. Remember that. Head towards the head. Yes. You want you want the the grain of the hair to be facing towards the front of the saddle. Yeah. That way your saddle pad won't slip out underneath it. Your pa no one ever has a saddle pad slip out from yeah. slip in, slip forward. They always slip back. So. so it doesn't really matter except for the sheepskin. The rest right. of the grain's pretty well okay. Right. And this already has two holes, but this leather is pretty rotten right okay. there, so I'm going to make two new holes. All right. Come back over there, Abigail. Right. Thank you. I've marked those holes. So you're not reusing those holes. You're, I'm you, making new holes. You marked your uh, stirrup part that you were going to use, and now we've... Cut right, in I'm, some I'm new holes. Using fresh meat here. Fresh meat. Copper yeah, and rivets and burrs. Copper rivet and burrs here. Uh, let's see, where's your metal piece at? 
this is just metal bench iron nothing fancy about it and I'm going to put to these rivets in from the back side because they're this finished part up here is not going to be visible what size of uh, rivets are we using here these are uh, number nines, number nine copper rivet and burrs. So in piece, some people may not ne know about it. You have a special tool for your to set your, your burr on there. Yes, this, this is a tool. It's got a small hole here, and yeah. it's got a doming feature on that side. And this one is for a number nine. There's number another nine. one for what, what's a the other size? 12. 20, they, 12? they make several different sizes. I think they even make 14s, and I've got one at home that's a size 7. Yeah, you know, but those are all odd. Nines and twelves are what okay. what are predominant. And you got to have a number nine setter to set a number nine. Yeah, you can set a number twelve rivet with a number nine setter. It doesn't do a beautiful job, but you can do it. <laughs> but you can't set a nine with a twelve setter. Yeah, because it's too small. So anyway, I'll use this this hole. See, I've got some extra rivet there. Now I know from experience, I tried to do this on a piece of granite that was over there by you, and what does that tend to do? <laughs> Break the granite? <laughs> yeah, broke the Unless corner of your... you've got a really thick piece, you know. Yeah. But this is just a bench iron. I've had it for 30 years. It's worked yeah. pretty good for this. So when you cut that off, let's see. I left I... probably a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Come on, camera. There we go. So you can see this one has some left for us to be able to dome over on it. That's what we were at. Yeah. We left some there. Yeah, you don't want to cut them off flush. You just need a little bit left to, to actually. A rivet is the part that actually mushrooms over. Man, who put who made all this dirt? Wet I dirt everywhere. Mud you. everywhere. I couldn't tell you. But anyway, after I got those clipped off, then I'll take this dome part of this rivet setter. First, I'm going to just give them both a smack. And that would kind of spread things out. But this You this, made that top real smooth now, and now when you dome those, now all you're really doing is that circle part. Yeah, you're doming just over smoothing it. it up more and doming it over. But if you notice the I used the wrong side there. If you notice that you use the the spot to set your bird, it didn't do anything. And you spin that around just to I just turn it around a little bit so it does the same thing all the yeah. way around. So if you see if we can get it back in there. Come on, camera. Hello. All right. Uh -huh. There we go. So you can kind of see it domed over there. Nice. Okay. Next, we're going to take our stirrup leather. Oh, sorry. I set it on the saddle. So and there again, sit. remember our, our near and our off side. One stirrup leather is always going to be a bit heavier than the other. This is our, our offside fender, so I'm going to use the, the lightest stirrup leather on the offside. So this little whoop de doo in here, this is towards the back? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to stick this through. And then we'll get a couple questions here. What would you say that our saddle was worth when we started working on it, being a production saddle? The way it was, it was worthless. It only for someone to hang up somewhere. It, yeah, you know, as far as usability, it was worthless. So you you're matching up the piece that you put on and yeah. matching that up to the stirrup leather yes. that you. What I'm going to do? This is the bottom part of our blevins. Okay. Up. When we do our blevins buckle, let me try to get our camera just a little bit tighter so we can see all these parts. Hopefully, just let me know if you can't see them or if you're seeing fine. I just want to make sure that you can see this part. This is the part that I guess I don't get confused on, but I've never really done before. So, are you sandwiching that between the leathers there? There, there it's going to go between the leather, but I'm going to put it on the outside so I can mark the hole. Okay. Oh, sorry, I stole your pen. That's all right. All right, got a pen. Don't ever use a pen when you're marking leather. 
Unless you're a skilled <laughs> expert like Benny okay. Long. <laughs> now, what I've done is I've just marked these two holes on this Blevins buckle. Some of them have three holes. Yeah. I never use all three. I always use the, just the bottom two. Where did you know where to set this at? Was there uh, a certain spot that you did or just give it a little there's bit? There's a little crease in this Blevins buckle. Yeah. I want. I don't want to cover that. I want to be a little bit behind that. Yeah, it's got a little offset. I don't, it may be hard to see. You can see a little bit the different kind of change in metal there. Rotate it like that. So you, it's, you don't want to go all the way up here like no, that. No, you want to, you want to be about like that. Just as long as you've got good meat on your uh, your stirrup leather itself, that's about right. That's all right. about how. That's good. That's it. where you marked your holes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to even these two up. And uh, you can use this one if you want. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll get those even. So we had a wor a worthless saddle. What would you say that you would be able to turn this around for if we went <laughs> oh, maybe God. and sold it? I don't know. We're going to have more in it than this saddle is worth in reality. And that's kind of the whole deal. We're just doing this to show you guys how to do it. It's a production saddle. But I would say I know a guy that goes and he repairs saddles. He gets them for maybe $50, $75 if he buys, if he has anything in them. Um, and he sells them for three fifty, four hundred dollars. I would say that's what this saddle would sell for in the neighborhood of three hundred and fifty dollars. I wouldn't. You wouldn't make somebody pay that. No. Yeah, we put. You wouldn't have done it anyway. No, I, I would have told him it's really not worth it. But what other methods would there be? So we're doing the Blevins buckle, and and I know when I'm there, changing stirrups. There are several different buckles. Blevins buckle is is sort of. Uh, State of the art. It's it's standard of the industry for almost every saddle that you yeah. go and buy in a saddle store in the United States anyway. Right, will have a Blevins buckle on it. They have some other ones. Uh, oh gosh, there was a guy named uh, Benny Veach who made some some uh, buckles that were similar to a Blevins buckle, a little bit different. Uh, Superior Saddle Tree made some buckles for a while. They all had a series of, of pins in them, though, that held them together. The only other alternative you would have would be uh, just a regular uh, uh, heel bar buckle yeah. like, like we had on this saddle to begin with. Yeah, so it would be like a, a belt, like you'd be right. le looping up a belt right. at the point where you do the Blevins part of the buckle. Right. Is this our Blevins? Go ahead, what you're doing. Okay, I was gonna, I was gonna try to impress on people which way these buckles go. This buckle is actually gonna be, be between these two pieces of leather, but you always want these pins to be facing up towards the top of the outside of the fender. Okay. That way, when you turn them in, yeah, they will be like this oh. rather than than like Slide this. Slide back that way a little bit. Sorry. That way, that way, they'll be on the outside of your. Uh, you can, you'll be able to see. Yeah, it. they won't. They won't. You won't have right. them bunched up on the inside. But anyway, I'm just going to take these. I'm going to put on the finish side instead of the other side. Did I ask you if these were a Western? Specific to Western saddles? No, you didn't ask that, but as far to my knowledge, yes, they are. Yeah. I know you don't know a ton about... Well, English saddles, uh, English type saddles, uh, always uh, have a, a heel bar buckle. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to set these rivets the same way we set the other ones. And you can get the different length rivets. Uh, these are one inch rivets or three quarter inch rivets, I believe. And you, you always want enough where you need to clip a little bit off. But they sell by the pound, so you don't get longer than you need. Could you save that metal piece that you're just throwing yeah. somewhere and yeah, go the guy I used recycle to work for, The guy that the first saddle maker I worked for had a tin can, a coffee can that he yeah. always throw those in and save your copper. We got to recycle yeah. it. Yeah. Cycle reduce and use. What's the main point of doing the Blevins buckle? I know what uh, I like it ease, for. For the ease of changing, if you've got more than one person that rides the saddle, you need to change the length of the stirrup leather yeah. almost every time. Or if you're, or if you're just changing your stirrups. 
Yes, yes, you put a different pair of stones. Where'd your domer go? I'm gonna do something different on this one than we did on the other, and everybody doesn't do this, it isn't necessary. Yeah. But this is a rivet domer. It just uh, goes over the head of that rivet and actually domes it over. I don't know if you can see that, but instead of just a flat rivet, <clears throat> when rivets wear, they'll get real sharp on the mm -hmm. edge. And uh, this will make that not, it not kinda, happen. It kind of just turns it around and pushes it back into the leather, but yeah. it's not sharp there at all. Yeah. If it does catch you or it does catch the horse, you're not getting a sharp point on it. Yeah. Okay, now this is an important part. All right. I did. I haven't t attached the top yet. Okay. But I've attached these two bottoms. When I turn this, it's going to change the length from uh, from the top to the bottom. Okay. So you want to make sure that you always have that attached solid before you make that turn. And this, I so don't you know if you can see this is broken. So I'm going to punch two. New Actually, I'm going to cut the top of this fender off a little bit. You're going to get us a stylized one. Yeah. Whenever you rolled this back the other way, whenever you, where'd you go to? Well, it doesn't matter as long as you make a turn there. Oh, just make it, make a turn. Make yeah. sure your two pieces of leather are still tied yeah. together so that this piece isn't tied or loose. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, you're okay. cutting. Yeah, I'm going to cut because this this one rivet hole is torn out. Yeah. So I'm going to cut both of these off. Let me hang them out here a little bit while you cut. Make sure. Okay. Now we're rid of that old piece. Yeah, and there again, we're going to get some fresh meat here. Off. Cut the bad spots out. I'm going to punch myself a hole about here. This isn't rocket science, folks. You just don't want to get too close to the edges. It's saddle repair. Yeah. I bet a rocket scientist probably could do it, though. Well, they might get confused. <laughs> Especially when it gets to the tooling part. They'd say, where's the engine on this thing? <laughs> That's right. You're sitting on it. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to mark the holes in the stirrup leather. If you don't have this bent, when you if you punch these stirrup leathers while this was out straight... It's going to be in a different spot. Okay, I've got two holes here, right? Yeah. Okay, let me show you where this would be. If I hadn't made that bend. Well, I can tell you, you don't even have to mark them. This yeah. hole right here is outside your leather. There's a good half inch difference. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as you flatten that all the way out flat, you it just jumped up there. Now, roll it back in shape. Yeah. So now we're going to do some two more rivets now. I could probably be cleaning some pieces while I stand here and talk to you. Yeah. All right, why don't you yell at me? <laughs> but we've about got to a new stirrup leather on here and then stirrup leathers are, are a, a common repair job if you uh, do much saddle work you will be repairing these a lot because they are uh, one of the few wear points on a saddle they're, they're like fan belts and, and brake pads on your car you know they're parts that, that get used and they will wear out I know when we talk about getting saddle, it's always what's the stirrup on a used one. What's the stirrup leather look like? Do we need to replace the stirrup leather? What would it, what would what's a, what's a stirrup leather job? What would how much money would you have in leather using Herman? Uh, these stirrup leathers here cost around thirty dollars each uh, retail cost on them. Uh, so you'll have sixty dollars for a pair of them for the material. I don't know. It well, what about your time? How much time would you say that it would take you to do stirrup leathers for one? If I was just doing this, trying to make money at it, I could probably do them in an hour, maybe maybe a little more, two hours, say. Yeah. So, so whatever you I whatever would, you, your hour cost you. If it was me, or or if you were, if you go online and look at the people that do saddle repair, most of them will probably charge around one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars for new stirrup leathers. For three inch, these are two and a half, you know, so uh, the size of the, the stirrup leather will make a difference because of the cost of the leather itself. Material or labor is going to be about the same on either. Okay, 
Now I'm going to dome these again. This is the part where the doming really does help because these will always get sharp where they wear between the between the fender and the seat jock. So you dome these over, you, you eliminate that. All right. Now I've got that on there. Here's the sleeve to our Blevins buckle. Well, right here. There's a there's a little dimple on one side and it goes towards the top. I'll just slide it up here. Dimple towards the top. Why would we know that? Uh, that's the part. It'll make it easier for it to slide over these two. Uh, yeah, the other pins. These two pins. Yeah. Stirrup leather is done. But if you see what we've got here on the edge, we actually got two pieces of leather that that stirrup is riding on. So um, we cheated on some time because we already had our leather pieces cut. You already had your um, keeper already kind of cut there. So Normally for to repair, uh, put a new set of uh, stirrup leathers on, you don't have to put this this extra piece on. Right, we just had to make a, you know, a little repair. Yeah, this saddle is a little bit different, so Every one's going to be a little different, but this is different than most of them will be. All right, what do you want to do next? Now, I've got this glue is probably ready to stick on this fender okay. or this skirt. All right, I'll move my other, got that other fender clean. Got a couple more questions coming in here. The only thing you've got to remember when you stick these together is make sure you've got plenty of material all the way around. That dome tool that you use, Denny, that's something that you got here. Is that a personal no, tool? No, that's a personal I don't tool. Think that we... The only one, uh, I believe, Bob Davis is the only one who makes an actual rivet donor that I'm aware of. Well, I Bob, could be wrong. Bob Davis. Bob Davis. I guess if you just Google rivet donor, you might be able to find something. I, you there, we don't have good. one that I that I know of. So yeah. I appreciate used, you using tools. I have that can't used, get to people. Maybe. I have used a. Uh, uh, a domed rivet setter for domed cap rivets. Some of those are big enough and they will work. Yeah. Okay, what other questions have we got? Oh, we got another word I said of that. Sorry, I was trying to clean up my mud mess here. So, different thickness leather on either side. Couldn't you just make both sides extra th thick? Or are you trying to save weight? Why? Sure, you could make both sides extra thick, but it depends on how much leather you want to buy. So we were uh, assume we're assuming that we're using like a whole a whole a whole side. When you build a saddle, it takes two sides of skirting leather. Okay. Basically, two sides. Sometimes a little scrap to boot. But uh, when you cut it, uh, you'll always cut uh, generally a, a stirrup leather off of each side. Mm -hmm. Then I always cut my skirts and my fenders, and then my rigging, and then all my other parts. But to, unless you want to buy three or four sides of leather, it's going to be hard to match all of your weights. Yeah, I guess uh, it depends on how much you want to spend to know, build the saddle. Yeah, you can you can go to. Uh, I used to work for a guy in Wyoming. We built a saddle that to sold for twenty five thousand dollars. We used two sides of skirting leather on it. Yeah, came out beautiful. Yeah. You know, uh, if you use good leather, you can get two fairly matched pieces out of two sides of leather. Yeah. Okay. How much do you want to have in your saddle? I guess that's the yeah. question at yeah. hand. All right, back to the table. Okay. We've got this uh, skirt on here, I guess. We could stitch it together if you want to. You can you can hand stitch these if you want. If you don't have access to a machine, you can sure hand stitch them. We left our stitches in here because it was it was kind of hard to get it to pull out. Uh, a saddle that's this brittle, it's hard to get the stitches out without tearing actually through the leather. So what we're going to try to do is go back to the yeah, same holes. They'll, it'll work out pretty well, I do believe. All right. We're, we're going to find out right now. Denny has faith, so... We'll let him get it set up on the showing machine and see what happens. Do we need to change? Uh, what do you want to change? Cameras here? Or no, I got a camera. Just... I got a camera set up to watch <laughs> okay. you close up and okay. see what you. Now I, I will always start at the top of the skirt, the part that won't be seen. It's it's going to be under underneath the uh, the tree itself, 
And that's because I don't know exactly what this is going to look like till after I've started. It could be good. It could be bad. This is you're yeah. watching as we go. This is I'll this is the, the part. I'll do the same thing on a on a brand new saddle. I'll always start at the top. So now, how are you gonna? You're on. How are you gonna see? I'm gonna make a couple of stitches and see if if my uh, holes line up. Okay. Which I doubt that they will. That's pretty close. Yeah, but I'm gonna lengthen it out just a little bit here. That one is not as good. Find yourself back in a hole and line it back up again. Luckily, this machine, you can just crawl with it, and that's, that's great for this kind of stuff. Yeah, the speed reducer and the servo motor on it really serve a good purpose for you to be able to go at a crawling speed, you know, and just feather that trigger. Now, I don't know if you can see behind where I've stitched or yeah. not. But uh, the stitches look pretty good, even though there's old thread still in there. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. And these skirts weren't in bad a shape where the holes, you know, would be tearing or anything. I'm not following the holes real well on this, but this is up at the top where it's not going to be seen, so I'm not going to worry about that. When I get over here toward this end, start around the finished part of the saddle, I'm going to take my time. And Get our holes Set lined up. up better. For one thing, these stitches are a different length than going around. The ones at the top look like they're a little bit longer. Yeah. And then they get sh they're a little bit shorter. A little more consistent around them. All right. Now we're into the money part. Yeah, just about right here you can see where the, where, oh, yeah. the, where that ends. Actually, this light part yeah. is never going to be seen. All this dark part will be. So I've got that much right. room to... Uh, Test to make my uh, adjustments. Shorten it out the touch. Just a touch here. Not looking bad. Oh. So if you had a if you were using a machine when you were making saddles, would you be would it would, would it be on a table? Would you have a table that oh, comes no, with this? I'd have it just like this. Just like this. If you have a sit down machine to make to stitch saddle skirts with, yeah, you can't stay out of your own way. The the Cobra three and four have a table setting that come with it. Still, just having the cylinder arm out there, mm -hmm. just so you can maneuver it wherever you need to maneuver it and exactly. lay it down a little exactly. bit. Not going bad. Every now and then it tries to roll too far. That's just kind of the, the weight of it pushing over. Yeah. All right, I'll quit talking so you can concentrate. Well, uh, also the the fleece itself will make a difference. Sometimes it doesn't want to crawl. Got yourself set back up there again. Adding that fleece back on there, does that change you know a little it'll, bit of the it'll stitch? change your stitch length yeah. if you've got it set. This isn't doing too bad for this old saddle. I'm saddle. I'm more than satisfied with what's going on so far. Oh, oh sorry, I didn't lock your machine down. It keeps rolling away on you. You can blame all that other stuff on me. I'm going to. Okay. I already have. Don't mess up from the rest of the way out, then. <laughs> well, the machine's locked down now. <laughs> this is kind of the tedious part. Yeah, but it's also the part you want to take some time with. You speed up down the back stretch.
I'll let you keep going on there. I'm going to clean some other pieces. Any questions coming through, Stacy? Everybody just being quiet? Everybody's saying, man, I'm going to have to handle this one. Yeah. If you were doing this, would you need to have a three or a four to do it, or could you do it on a 26? We're using two seven. You couldn't do it on um, You need a heavy stick. Yeah. Yeah, that 20, I think we have 277 thread in there, and a 26 only does 207. Generally, I use 277 on the top, and whoops, I just broke a thread. What happened to you? I broke a thread. Uh oh. We don't have any scissors, do we? No, we lost Did them. Did I bring any? No. Got my handy little tool here. The old knife tool. I always hate it when I break a thread, but it's really not the end of the world. Just back up a couple of stitches and start over again? Well, what I'm going to have to do is find the end here the last stitch and pull it through. Pulling some stitches back though. Yeah, i got to oh, okay. pull it through the back side here. All right. Come by that camera three there, Abigail. There's a little squirt bottle in there. All right. That's my little squirt bottle that I'm trying to clean stuff with. What else, what has everybody been working on, Stacy? Anybody got any projects going on? What's on the workbench? I know we got some of these people watching. We'd like to see some of your finished product, even if it was on Facebook, Instagram. We've been trying to be pretty good. You can go back. There you go. Been trying to be uh, better about sharing your guys' uh, work and. See what you guys have going on. There's some pretty neat things on there. All right, I don't know if you all can see this. This is a part of the saddle of the skirt that takes a lot of wear from the stirrup leather rubbing back and forth. And all the stitches are actually worn out right here. They weren't even in there anymore. No. Is anybody even watching Stacy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Feel like it's just Denny and I talking together at the moment. <laughs> He's probably sick of listening to me. We're doing okay. All right. This is a kind of a tedious part. If you all were doing it, you wouldn't be talking about it. <laughs> Maybe that's what they're... cussing a little bit. They're trying to be kind to you and let you do your work, and here I am just yammering. Wish that Tony guy would just be quiet so then he can stitch that leather We've up. about got this one licked. Anybody see any of those other videos we had with... Uh, the new machines we got coming out. We've got Aussie hats. Aussie hats. Got holsters and knife sheaths. I want to see some of those holsters and knife sheaths. Bicycle bags. For Bicycle bags, like the, on the back of the seat. For handlebars. Yeah, back yeah, to the yeah. Back to uh, three there, Abigail. All right. Oh, who? Somebody set this silly saddle soap in the way again. <laughs> This is where I uh, had to splice in and restitch, so I'm going to tie a knot right here. And just a square knot. You can tie a granny knot if you want to. Probably not going to cut and burn your thread on that one. Uh, no, it's not a good idea. What thread is these size threads you We use 277 on the top, and I think we use 207 on 207 the bottom. 207 on the bottom, yeah. But uh, when you did it, you said 277 and 277? Oh, did I? Yeah, I don't know. I might have. What you normally use 207 and 277? Yes, 207 on the bottom, on the yeah. bobbin side. <clears throat> okay, 
Now then, since I've got that all stitched up, it's stitched up pretty good. I don't know if you can all see it, but uh, our stitch line looks pretty, pretty nice, and I'm proud of it. I think it looks as good as be before we started. Yeah, somebody was somebody had a note here and said, "I remember that you said you were going to replace the rear jockey." Look no. at the stamping and how you will match the new one to the old pattern. I don't think our rear jockey looks okay. No, I wasn't. We weren't going to replace that. We were just going to straighten it out. If you want to uh, to match a tooling pattern, about all you can do is either hand draw it, just look at it and hand draw it, or put a piece of a sheet of notebook paper over it and scribble on it with it. If you pencil. took like your graphite pencil and just kind of did yeah, one of those you texture, can, you, can you know, when you were a kid and you laid leaves down on the table and you scribble those yeah. leaves on same idea exactly nice i hope we weren't going to because that would be a tooling project yeah. that i would be very bad at yeah but anyway now that we've got this on there let's trim this off and i'm just going to take my handy dandy pocket knife here so somebody said if they were going to make a dog collar so they had a i guess this is an old belt that they had We'll just assume that it is a belt that they had they turned into a dog collar could they bring it in here and have a stitch it and the answer is yes we will do that for you we have our people in production uh even if you have uh, we had a guy an electrician bring in his tool bag and some rivets had pulled out of it we don't we don't do a lot of repair work we will as a customer service on occasion yeah if it's not if we have time. If it's not a saddle. Well, <laughs> I would even do a saddle on occasion if it's something that uh, yeah, th that I wouldn't be ashamed to charge for. Right. I would be ashamed to charge someone to do what we're doing here. To do this saddle, you'd be ashamed to charge them? Well, yes, because they wouldn't ever get their money back out of it. Yeah. But if it was Grandpa Joe's and they would, you would do it for them? They had sentimental Grandpa value Joe, in it. Grandpa Joe wouldn't have bought this. Uh, <laughs> what thread would you use if you were hand sewing it? I would use the Niletex thread. It's it's a good heavy thread and and a, a probably a double lot needle. Mm -hmm. We have that one millimeter Rhino thread on there. Yeah, but I would I would use a wax thread. I'll say this. That one, yeah, it's a wax, just lightly yeah. waxed. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it, but uh, yeah, any kind of a wax thread would be good. Even we sell what they call an all thread, mm -hmm. which is a pretty pretty small diameter, and it would work well. It would, you know, it would make the prettiest stitch simply because it's a small diameter. Yeah. But a lot of people wouldn't like it. They say, "Oh man, that wouldn't last. That's not heavy enough." But okay. What's gonna be Pulling on your stitches, nothing. The stitches just hold things together. Right. Some people like to do them thicker because they like to see it, especially on a saddle. Yeah, but that's uh, I guess you know you a lot. Of, there's a place for finesse and a place to just get heavy-handed too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's the way I feel about. I cleaned it. all the parts, Denny. You don't got to get heavy-handed with me. Okay. <laughs> uh, since I don't have a pair of scissors here, I'm not going to trim this, but I would just clip all this excess off. I stole off a pair of scissors from you. Well, let me use those then. Yeah, where's the, there's the one. They, yeah. say, even, they, they say DL they on them. They name on them, huh? That's right. They say DL okay. on them. I would just take this and clip this off all the way around. You ever tried um, dog grooming? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, you mean for as a profession or yeah. just to do it? Yeah. <laughs> Not You're just really handy with them scissors right there. My hair's getting a little long on top. Uh, I can fix you up there. <laughs> you won't like it, but I can fix you up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get heavy handed with it either. <laughs> but anyway, there we go. You've got a, a new lining on this saddle. And, it, and that's that. That's the end of that tune. Uh, and we've done one uh, stirrup leather. I think that's probably about all we have time for today. Probably so. Uh, we'll let some people ask some questions. We'll show the uh, we'll show the parts that we kind of got done here again oh, for people that may got in. One other thing. Okay. We I've uh, oh, we put a new rating on one side of this saddle. Yeah. And that's it finished. 
And uh, I guess you had this piece of lace pulling this up out of the way, like raising the hood on a car. Yeah, yeah I had it holding that up where I could work on it. That's You're a pretty handy guy. Pretty nice tool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I see. Why didn't you shear the fleece before stitching it? Where were you going to shear it to? Right, because we left it. We left right. it long. Yeah. If you try to if you try to trim that stitch that fleece to exact size and uh, trim it before you stitch, mm -hmm. you will never be able to. To get things to match up right. If the glue came off a little bit and started moving around, it's well, going to be in a bad yeah. spot. Yeah, you always, if you do it like I did it, and mine isn't the only way, but if you do it like I did it, you're guaranteed to not be too small with your lining. Right. It's always going to be a good size. You can, you can always, you'll have plenty of room. All right. Let's see. I got a high lead 618. If I use 207 on the top thread, would I have less issues sewing with a smaller bobbin thread? If so... Yes. I almost always stitch with a size smaller on the on the bobbin than you do on the Is there a reason the for that? <clears throat> yes. The reason is when your needle goes down, it's, it, uh, it doesn't have as much in it as it does when it comes back up because your, your hook has hooked that bottom thread. Mm -hmm. And it's pulling, actually, you'll have three pieces of thread inside your leather instead right. of two. So a smaller bobbin thread gives you a little more room, gives your machine a little more Especially room if you're work. trying to push the limits. Of, if 207 is the heaviest that you can do on your machine, almost always doing a 138 yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, do a 138. On the the only time that I wouldn't use a smaller thread on the bottom is if I'm using a 138 on top. Right. Because the next size down basically is a size 69, and that's, yeah. that's like hair. Yeah. So we're going to get into some more sewing machine. I think we're going to pull – we used a class 3 today, but I think we're going to pull in maybe a class 4. And we may do it on this machine and talk about some of the other areas about maintenance and adjusting. Because I don't think on the other video we did on sewing machines, we talked about adjusting the bob and on the class 3 and 4. But – most of the time, you don't really have to. It's just you can fix yeah. the tension on the top. Yeah, that's that's something that should be stressed to people, especially people that are new to uh, heavy stitchers. Is do not fool with your bobbin tension unless you absolutely have to. That's the last thing right that should be on anyone's list to try and adjust. Because it's it's at a tension, and when that when the thread and it goes to the top, you're either pulling you tighten it up. Tighten up the top, and it'll pull it harder coming back up. Therefore, your knot's going to move through the leather to the top side more. Or if you loosen it up, the bob the the bobbin is going to pull against that top and leave it back towards the middle. And if it's too much, if it's if it's ending up on the bottom part of your project, now your bobbin is pulling harder than your top thread. So just give it a little tension and pull it back up through the leather. Yeah, yeah, just. <clears throat> My mach I've had a, an old machine for 35 years. Mm -hmm. I have never touched the bobbin tension, never once. It still stitches like a dream. Yeah. You know, the only thing you need to, you tension-wise, you need to adjust is your top tension. Just adjusting the top. And, and something that we do here on the machines that we're coming with, they say they're serviced by SLC as well. And, and even if you didn't get a machine from us and you're having difficulties with us, if it's not a machine that we carry a Cobra, or uh, the high lead one, if it's a different brand, say a, a Juki or other off brands, these these bodies have been kind of the same for a long yeah. time. The, yeah. the the casts are the same, and they just paint them a different color and they put a different name on them. Well, we'll still help you with your machine. Yeah. We're not Rusty and Kevin do really good about that, and and Jim in the back does a really great job of being able to talk people through how to adjust your machine. Yeah. yeah. So. Any other questions out there? Or is that kind of nailed it down? Well, we've got this part done. We got new shearling on that. Yeah, and I'll probably uh, finish the other one this week sometime. We've got the other one over there. I've got it cleaned up. We've got the other parts done. We've done this repair here. Uh, we just held this back on. You just kind of cut the pieces that you had. Yeah, well, let me see here. I've got the other pieces. Already... Here's the piece that came off. That's what we had before. Uh, yeah. So just cut it the same. Put yeah, it back. There, there again, you've got a right and a left. Yeah, this is the one that goes on the other side, though, I think. Yeah. Uh, that, all we did is 
just gonna cut it to the way that the other one looks. We put it back on with copper rivets here and uh, put a new hobble in between our uh, tie downs. Right. And then we got that done, so we'll finish that up. The it's, rest of the... the uh, you put this one on with screws instead of staples. Remember staples? Yeah, I didn't like taking those off very well. Oh, that's the wrong side. And so that's just going to cover that's going to cover it back up there. So you'll that's how it'll be. There you go. So we'll 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 do that part though next week. We'll put these pieces back on. They'll be on one side and we'll do the other side for you on the video. We'll have our pieces all put back together and ready to do it and I'm going to make Denny lace the skirts at least a little bit on you the back are. just so you can okay. see how that is. And then on our seat, we're going to do some um you're some... going to buck stitch it. Yeah, you always say Bucky, so I guess I'm going to be buck stitching now. <laughs> going to do some buck stitch along our seat instead of doing the seat liner yeah, back on there. Yeah, because that's we, the reason, because this seat was padded originally, yeah. and they they torn, the old padding probably wore out or had a tear in it, and they just pulled the whole thing off, and there were just thread holes. And it was too hard to take our candle back all apart and then try to oh, do that. Yeah. That's a job. That's that's another job. Especially on a production saddle. So if For, it's not sentimental value to you and it's a production one, yeah. And for a beginner, that's not something you want to tackle. Yep. Yeah. So we, we appreciate everybody joining us. We were on, um, we're going to be on again here on, on Monday talking about some new machines unless Rusty wants to jump in here and get another machine out today. We'll see what happens. But until then, Denny, we'll see you next, next Friday. Are we going to do this one again? As far as I know. All right. Unless we decide different. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not here Friday doing a saddle, then we'll do it. A different video. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye.